Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Thoughts at Country Club United Methodist Church. My name is Angie Colina McNeil. I'm the pastor here at this church. We are located at 57th and Warnell in the heart of Kansas City. We are south of the Country Club Plaza. That's where we get our name. And we are north of Brookside. We worship every Sunday at 1045 AM. We have in-person and we also live stream. We wanna make sure that anybody, everybody feels comfortable that wants to worship with us. So if you do join us in person, we do ask that you wear a mask and that you socially distance. Our pews have been spread, well, we put things in the pews to help you spread out more effectively. So um, welcome to Thursday Thoughts. There has been a lot on my mind lately and I didn't know where to start today, but I really, really hone in today on the story of the Valley of the Dry Bones, which is found in Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. I'll read that for you in just a minute. But most of you, if you've been tuning in or if you've been coming to church, you know that there is that it's not a secret that I love summer. Everything about hot weather, 80 and above, motivates me. Now, I will say if it's like 110, that's a little extreme for me. So I don't think I'll be moving to Arizona any time in the near future. But everything about the heat and the sun motivates me. And so over the past few weeks, you know, I've been a little bit down because um, because the weather is changing. You know, I think they call it seasonal affective disorder or seasonal affect disorder. Um, and I looked it up in the Mayo Clinic says it's a real thing. So if the Mayo Clinic says it's a real thing, then I'm gonna believe it. But this is what they said about it. Seasonal affective disorder, or sad, isn't that just so sad, <laughs> is a type of depression that's related to changes in seasons. Sad begins and ends at about the same time every year. And if you're like most people with sad, your symptoms start in the fall and continue into the winter months and it saps your energy, makes you feel moody, and less often sad causes depression in the spring or summer. So um, I know a lot of people say they don't like summer, but the fact that there are less people that are depressed during the summer means that most people also like the spring and the summer. I'm not alone in that. So um, you can look that up, mayoclinic.com org.com not sure what that is but you can check it out there or tomorrow I'll have it on my blog and you can just link to that as well so these past two days actually today's Thursday so these past th three days it has been warm outside and I have been totally reinvigorated by this spontaneous summer that we got we've had and I'm it's just really really exciting for me so I've spent a lot of time outside and so on Tuesday my husband and I we decided to go to one of our favorite spots which is called Crane Brewing and it's in it's in Raytown and one of my friends owns that brewery and so we were like you know what let's go out to the patio let's have like a short impromptu date before I have to go to my small group and it was, was dead. There was nobody there. I was, I was shocked. I know a lot of people are being safe, but this place has taken a lot of precautions to make sure that people are safe during, uh, when they visit. So they've created more outdoor space. They've removed tables in the, in the brewery. They've, they've opened up their back room, which is socially distanced, but there's just nobody there. And so I was like, man, this is just really kind of sad. And I talked to the manager there about what was going on and all that. But she just said that, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we were trying to be innovative and start new things and try to reach our clients and our customers, you know, people would come in and they would order things. And so things were OK. Now, I don't want to say that Crane is like dire straits or anything like that. Um, they do have a good distribution and everything's OK for, for that business. Um, it's a very great business that has brought a lot of life to downtown Raytown. So I really, really appreciate what Crane Brewing has done. I mean, you may not appreciate breweries and, and alcohol consumption, and I know that that's a touchy subject for pastors to talk about, but they've but done a lot of good things um, on top of creating uh, a brewery for the, the city of Raytown. So I always like to think of those things that um, 
companies are doing is even though they are distributing alcohol. So just want to let you know that. Um, so and last night, my husband and I and our daughter, we decided that we were going to have a family date night. When I left the office, it was nearly 90 degrees out. And I cannot tell you how excited I was about that. My husband said, I'm going to make potatoes, Brussels sprouts, carrots for dinner. And I was like, wait a minute, this is a rare opportunity. Let's go outside. Let's go somewhere. Um, let's so sit on a patio and let's go to the power and light district. So we went down to the power and light district and again, it, it was dead. And I understand, again, don't hear me saying, I think people should be out and doing things. But while the weather was beautiful, the only thing that I could think about was this imagery that comes to us from Ezekiel 37. And I'm going to read this passage to you because I think it's really um, indicative of where we are as a culture right now. So would you hear these words? It's a longer one, but I'll, I'll read it with pizzazz, if you will, and that will help us get through it because I know it can be awkward and weird and not cool to have somebody drone on and read to us. So, And I'm not one of those audible readers. But here is a scripture. I'm going to pull it up on the screen for you. I'm going to look off to the side because that's where it is on my monitor. So just so know that I am here and paying attention to you. So uh, Ezekiel 37. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to the valley filled with bones. He led me all around the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, Listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies. But they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. But I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, our entertainment district in downtown Kansas City has closed off the streets and it and it's opened up more outdoor seating, but but nobody was dining the other night. Doors of former restaurants were permanently closed. It was quiet and it was it was eerie. There were a few people taking selfies and doing the normal thing. But the empty street reminded me reminded me of that valley. 
reminded me of the dry bones. When I asked the brewery manager about opening up and if they'd seen much business and she said they weren't, the, and I looked around and saw everything at a standstill, the lifelessness of the place reminded me of that valley. It reminded me of the dry bones. And as I look out my very window here at church and watching the leaves fall, they create this beautiful carpet on the green grass, but I can't help think, I can't help but think of the impending bareness that the branches will once again have when winter comes. The season that we're in, the season of not just fall and impending winter, but the season of pandemic reminds me of the valley. It reminds me of the dry bones. But there's good news in all of this. There's good news about the seasons. They are a part of an ever important life cycle. In the spring, we have birth. In the summer, we have joy and fulfillment and life. In the fall, we have aging. And in the winter, we have death. But these life cycles of, of our seasons, they, they offer hope when things seem hopeless. And Jesus Christ calls us to partner alongside one another in these cycles of life, in these seasons of life, and to offer that hope. And even when the leaves have all fallen and the world seems dry as the bones of the valley, we must, as the church body, have intentionality as we reach people for Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not suggesting we all go and fill the power and light district, or we all go to our favorite breweries and, and simply give life to these. But there needs to be intentionality about how we interact with each other. Even if it means going into your neighbor's house and standing in the parking lot and offering a word of hope, this is the way that the Lord breathes new life into us. It is what helps us arise from our graves. I know you're thinking of Walking Dead. Don't think of that. But thinking of the new life of, of spring, a new life of resurrection. You know, as in the Valley of the, by, uh, the Dry Bones, God will breathe and is breathing. God's spirit once again into all of us. And I know that life will resurrect. But I have to ask myself, will it be the same? Will it be the same as it was before with all the things that people were doing all the time? It's 24 seven life cycle of being around people. And it seemed like rest was never something that was on the forefront of people's minds. My hope and my prayer is that things will look different. Maybe you won't be carting off your kids at every hour of the day to soccer and basketball or swimming and just filling their lives with busyness. Perhaps resurrection will look like rest. New life is upon us. This pandemic will come to an end. This spiritual drought that so many of us are experiencing, especially as churches are still gathering online and will continue to gather online. The online church gathering isn't going anywhere. But in this time of spiritual drought, we are trudging through it together and it will come to an end. And there will be newness of life. There will be resurrection of life. Not the same as it was before, but new things. God is at work in the world. I don't know what the future will look like. None of us do. Only God does. But I have every confidence, every confidence that God will breathe new life into all of us. I have every confidence that at this particular moment, God is breathing new life into us. So I ask you, 
And I want you to comment or you can email me. How is God breathing new life into you? How are you taking this time of pandemic to reconnect with one another? How is it during this time of pandemic you are not filling your schedules with something to do at every turn? How is God breathing new life into you? Let's pray. God of new life, God of our every breath, we give you thanks. Thanks for all the ways in which you are breathing your spirit into us. Equip us for the days ahead. Equip us through these seasons, these life cycles, as we continue to find new ways to reach new people, to make new disciples for the transformation of your world. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray these things. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you can join us this Sunday at 1045, either online or in the virtual world. We always live stream our services at 1045. So um, if you do decide to come in person, we just would love to have you here with us, but be sure to bring a mask with you. We do have extras in case you forgot them with hand sanitizer throughout the building. And we also have created space between seat, um, pews so that you can safely socially distance from one another. So I look forward to seeing you new Sunday. We've got a lot of things going on in the life of our church. Um, I don't know what happened to my screen that was supposed to be moving around, but hey, you know what? Better not to have distractions, right? All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you Sunday at 1045. Peace be with you guys.